We have gone through the storm, deep through its eye, and returned changed. After being left alone in the labyrinthine halls of the storm for hours with nothing but our thoughts, we have emerged a new person. This cataclysm is not a barrier to survival, but a world for us to live in and thrive in. We will become strong. We will overcome. We will live. Welcome back to Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead. The journey of Vellum. Okay, a lot has happened with us in the last few days. Let's make a quick assessment of where we are and what is going on. So we have actually slept through the day um, and are solidly in nighttime. We are only a couple houses away from the wizard tower that we want to hit because, well, knowledge is power and we need that knowledge. There is a spider den that we have spotted just to the north here. Um, we are underweight, which I think, I'm not sure about this, but I think that is a byproduct of uh, using our psionic abilities. Every once in a while, we'll be informed of um, our nether attunement, um, feeling like we have a sudden spike of feeling the nether. And whenever that happens, I believe it is literally ripping calories from our body. We don't have any food, and we're peckish. And we spent 2,300 calories yesterday, which is impressive because we didn't really do much. And we're starting to veer towards underweight. So we might want to start using our powers a little bit less. Uh, potentially, like, just using our concentrated powers a little bit less. And the first priority for tonight is probably going to be hit this, to hit this house just next to us here to see about finding some food. I don't think there's any food left in this place. And we also have to be very careful moving around here because there are still some... Very scary traps around here that we could accidentally walk into. Most of the injuries that we had from earlier are gone. And we do have some water here that we can put into our canteen and then drink the rest to turn it just um, tide us over for now. Uh, our, our stomach filled with water is not the most ideal, but it is at least something. Do we have a stick? We did pick up a pair of light gloves to make sure that we have something to hold on to. And we also um, kind of changed around how we're wearing various things right now because we noticed that our Spear of Brambles has concentration, verbal, and mobility requirements. And the mobility requirement means that if our legs are encumbered, it actually makes the spell cast more mana. So now it only costs 343 mana whenever it previously was costing over 400. But we do need a stick. And I don't think there are... Let's check. I don't think there's any curtains. Yeah. There's no curtains here. So we don't have any stick access. Uh, but there are curtains here. So what we're probably going to do here is we are going to phase through the wall. Reach out, touch the wall, let our power push us through. And then... Can we just open this? Yeah, we can just pry it open. Good. And we'll close this and uh, go ahead and tear down the curtains and equip the stick. I think it might be a good idea to go ahead and assume... Raspberry seeds. We don't need that. We're going to go ahead and assume that there's going to be potential problems here, so we're going to immediately summon the spear brambles, and it immediately succeeds as well. Fantastic. Our new resolution is driving us. We are not simply surviving in this wasteland anymore. We are going to live. We are going to thrive. Which means that's, well, in the time being, we need to make sure that we're still being careful. We're not going to just recklessly run into situations. But we need to move towards our goals. Okay, there we go. We managed to get quite a bit of food in our, in us right there. We need to move towards our goals. And my first goal is we need to learn more magic. So we're going to be hitting this wizard tower, but as soon as we're done with that, we are going to start hitting. So that one's done. That 
one's done. We're going to start hitting other wizard towers as well. And there's also other magical locations as well, like this magic, these magic meadows. And we're going to just be seeking out knowledge, seeking out power whenever possible. She made easy. Something killed. We're very close to that wizard tower and there's a bunch of dead zombies here. So the possibility that we're going to be running into golems here soon is going to be very high. We're going to go ahead and take advantage of their wake of destruction and crush down these corpses. Oop. I hit the car by accident. Crush down these corpses very quickly. What are these? Spider samples. There's spider samples all over the ground. Go ahead and take out that zombie. There, considering how many spider samples there are... Oh, you know what? There is that spider nest up there. That might have been what killed these zombies. Web spinning spider. Yes, there we go. That last corpse that we just crushed was a web spinning spider. So it seems like there might have been some sort of war between the zombies and the spiders. There is a meat cocoon here we're going to go ahead and take care of. Seems like that's might have been some sort of zombie being converted into a spider creature of some regard. Let's make progress towards... Hmm. We could attack the wizard tower now, but the issue with that is that if we did that, I'm going to change this note. Give me a second. Okay. We changed it to Survivor House because that's a really nice house. We attacked the Wizard Tower right away. Uh, and we have to retreat. And we don't have any food. So I think I'm actually going to get supplies first. Once again, raiding another house. We do have... This is just the, the nature of the city here. We do have, like, a semi-infinite amount of food supplies. And sometimes even, like... like other supplies as well. I'm not seeing anything super valuable here in the way of food. Our immediate needs have not changed too dramatically. It's more of a change of motivation that has overcome us. Our time in that other realm, that in-between realm, has made us resolute I again because we're underweight I don't want to activate any of our web spinning spider there there is one right there okay it's faster than us a light gray mutant spider the size of a dog with long legs big eyes and oversized fangs there's a good chance that that thing is poisonous two of them. We're going to go ahead and get into a house here and close the windows just so that we can look around with ease. I think until we have no choice otherwise we are going to avoid um, interacting with and interfering with these spiders. Inset sample there. Inset could be from We've seen those inset samples drop before. They could simply be from... There's some light down here. Maybe a car. They could be from... Uh, what are they called? The stating, stating horrors, which are what's happened when the cataclysm has come and touched cockroaches. Simple cockroach, no more. Ooh, a candle. That's actually very useful for us. We'll go ahead and grab that as well. Nothing else here. We don't... I mean, obviously, we're going to check for bandages whenever possible. But outside of that, there's nothing else that we much need outside of food. So we're going to kind of make a quick, very, very fast circuit of these houses. Looks like our spear just wore off, unfortunately. And of all times for it to do so. In fact... Is it cheaper? I think it is cheaper. Yeah, we'll just send out a series of magic missiles, shattering those crawling zombies' bones, taking care of them quickly and cheaply. There we go. 
Um, there's some food. Something digestible. We try not to be picky, but... Our oven diet does not bode well with some of this processed human food. It's not even pickiness. It's more of just... Things that are difficult for us to eat. I did see some kerosene in there. Um, it was in a refillable lighter. We'll take that, actually. I can think of a use for kerosene. We also do want to go back and get our bicycle at some point. If nothing else, just because it has... It has a decent amount of supplies in there for us. I believe it's going to be a good idea that once we... Ooh, solder. Once we clear out this next wizard tower, we should have enough food that we can start working on that now. That actually scared me. <laughs> I freaking jumped. Uh, seems like they're moving in pretty fast. We're going to leave this door open, this window open there. Pull out our spear. What drew them in so much? Jeez. There's one down. Slice them up as they come in through the windows. That sounds like a few too many. We spotted a bar guest. Huge, swollen zombie dog, smeared black with slime. Its teeth have grown longer, and its broad back ripples with muscles and oozing wounds. That sounds like something we just don't want to mess with. down the tough zombie as we move f more farther north. And, uh, do we spot golems yet? No, they must be farther inside. There's another acid-filled zombie there. We have theorized ways to get rid of them. We should be able to butcher them. Problem with butchering them is that I don't know if we can butcher them from afar like this. Acid filled zombies are still a bit of a problem for us. Ooh. This is very useful. Oh, those are twigs. That's unfortunate. I was hoping that those were going to be uh, full sticks. But uh, as I was saying earlier, after we clear out... Is this a taped window? Interesting. After we clear out this wizard tower and get from it whatever we can, I think what we're going to do is head back to our home base and work on crafting permanent spears. We've been really liking the spear brambles. And it is a powerful spell, but it is very temporary. Oh, what is that? That is a clay golem and another clay golem. Um, wind strike. Oh, we need our hands free to cast magic missiles. That's why it didn't work. But wind strike does not require our hands. need to be careful. Focus down the clay golem as much as we can. Clay golem dies. Good. After hacking away at these guys for what has felt like a very long time now, we do have both of the clay golems down and now we're just slicing away at the placid golems, but our spear is going to run out. There we go. 
I was just trying to say very soon, but immediately. The answer is immediately. Um, we need to find more spear materials. Should be able to find something nearby. Worst case scenario, we pop into another building. Oh, we only have 74 mana left, though. See, this is why we need a more permanent spear, a more long-term spear. These spears have been incredibly useful for us. Incredibly good at getting us through the dangers of, of the apocalypse here. As weird as it sounds, I might... We're going to break in to the wizard tower here. What's the great coat like? Full length wool coat. 50 warmth. That'd be fantastic when winter comes, but right now it's probably going to be bad enough that it would, um... We'd probably die in our own sweat. Our current level of mana regeneration, it would take us approximately eight hours to get our mana back. So, it would be four hours if we want to get half of our mana back. So, to be honest, we're going to just take a moment here and kind of just rest to get our mana back and then we'll summon another spear and finish clearing out this tower. Okay, we have enough mana now to be able to do this. Man, we're just burning through our food. There's a possibility that whatever's changing us, the consequences of our recent actions, is also consuming food very, very rapidly. To the point where I actually think we might stop and go get more food again, because we're package again, and we have burned through all of that food that we've eaten. So, we have... stick now and after several attempts did manage to summon another fear of brambles we reach out and touch this wall to phase through but unfortunately there was something in the way probably more wall i doubt there's anything in here yeah it's mostly just like materials there's not going to be any food stored in here it is a relatively safe place to be, though, just because of the fact that, like, everything is all... I don't know what you would call that. Taped up, I guess? We, do, we had spotted this Mido Tower in the distance, so we probably don't want to head too far that direction. So we're going to head down south here. And see about getting into one of these buildings down here. Oh boy. Okay. As we tried to step into the alley, trying to avoid confrontation, a shady zombie literally materialized out of thin air. As they do. We've run into these before. They are essentially invisible until they are on top of us. Go. Did he lose track of us? I think he did. There we go. Clear out this little pack of zombies here. And get into the here and close the doors. Whew. I'm not stressed. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not stressed at all. Should be able to just quickly move straight to the fridge and pick up some food. And we're going to go ahead and eat some of it. And we're... There we go. Finally satisfied. Our diet is just... Nothing seems to be enough. But here we go. We actually have a significant amount of food in our backpack. Something that 
making us salivate slightly just thinking about how much food we have. I also think that we're running out of space. Yeah, we are officially out of space in our backpack. But we should be able to drop some of this stuff here. We kind of want to keep the copper wire. I'm not sure about keeping the copper, though. We did pick up a huge, just like, block of copper. You know what? We can eat some of this food to get rid of some weight as well. Let's go ahead and fill ourselves up because we know we're going to need it. Okay. Now we're not overweight anymore. Once again, our spear just vanished. Not the greatest situation. Grab another stick here. Nothing interesting here. It's always soldering iron. Oh man, that would be really good if we could get that. That's actually something we've been looking for. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. What can we drop? Well, the copper isn't useful if we don't have the soldering iron in the first place. So we're going to probably drop just like half of our copper. We'll drop some of our copper wire as well. Yeah, this thing is incredibly light, so I don't know what's taking up so much of our inventory weight. Um, in fact, what we can do is we can sort this by weight and then look at what we need to drop here. The chemistry essentials is actually pretty heavy, that's for sure. That's a lot of copper wire as well. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything like super non-essential that weighs a lot. I think it's just that we just have a lot on us right now. Still have our salt pack, right? We do. Because of needing mana, we're probably going to wait another hour. And then we have enough food that we'll head back to the Wizard Tower. And we'll definitely finish that off before the night is done. Okay. I think we still have a little bit of darkness. It's 3.38 p.m. We did manage to summon another spear. And we are going to... Man. Lots been happening around here. Make sure we take care of all those bodies so that they don't come back. We're going to head up towards this wizard tower. We're going to quickly dismember. It did work. Good. We don't sense any traces of magic left in it anymore. Oh, that's not good. All of these zombies busted into the wizard tower, got brutally destroyed by the golems, but they busted down the front door, which means that the golems are free now. Okay, we're going to set up this area back here to be a golem destruction area now. Go ahead and take down the golem from inside instead of outside. There's another one. Let it come around the corner. Quickly take it down. There we go. Okay, there's more upstairs. It saw us. Good. We need to not be so fast that it doesn't follow us, though. There we go. 
Yeah, that required a little bit of uh, fancy footwork, but we got it down. Go ahead and catch our breath. We're probably running out of night time here. Okay. Second floor is clear. Third floor. Here's clear. That might be the last one. And we take it down. Oh, cost us a few hits to our leg, but um, let's carefully check. Make sure that was the last one. Okay, we have this place clear. We're going to head, go ahead and close the windows and we will probably stay on the top floor of this place for tonight. Just in time too, as our spear just vanished. That's what we got. Um, a scroll of invisibility. Unfortunately, we can't learn that. Apparently, it is a technomancy spell. Unfortunate. Uh, grokking algorithms. Not sure what that means. Fireball. Hurry blast. Those are both Kelvinist spells. Again, um, counter to our schools, so we can't learn them. Um, a scroll of escape. Ooh. Teleports you a random distance and medium distance to help you escape your foes in dangerous situations. That might be a good backup spell to learn whenever we're too damaged, too much in pain in order to uh, use our psionic abilities. There's some diamonds there. Uh, yes. Diamonds are going to be pretty useful for crafting. Okay. Kind of curious if we can see, we can't see the state of the hordes. But it should be daytime relatively soon here. So we're going to go ahead and close, while we still have some nighttime on our side, close all the curtains we can. Can't exactly, there's no doors here anymore, so we can't exactly prevent. Oh, we do have doors. We have interior doors. Here we go. Okay. I feel a little bit safer with these doors closed. And then we're going to go up a few floors. Just so that if anything catches scent of us, it's going to be pretty hard to find us up here. And, uh, yeah, we're going to bandage ourselves up. And start reading these books and see what we have at our disposal here. So the first one is actually this uh, Magical Mishaps book that we actually grabbed on a previous day. It looks like someone has taken a catalog of misspelled and mismade um, spell creations and has created a bit of a catalog of them. We have Cause Bear, a spell that uh, we have a lot of curiosity about and we can now actually f fully study. Then we also have Torn Skin, this spell which resembles Thorn Skin through the sap and needles covering the page seems to involve mul multiple thorns and bleeding wounds. The marred words may have altered the function. And we also have Cloak of Frog. Someone's personal notes were added to the spell. You're positive that they both changed the name and the function. So we're going to probably study these as well because we're really interested in the just the strange chaotic nature of these things. And we also have this, um, what is it? Make your own special effects. Uh, shadow field. Sounds pretty interesting. Cloak, uh, shroud an area in intense shadows. Could be pretty useful as a backup during the day. And then the actual Cloak of, Fro of Fog spell. Call to the Sky Spirits for aid and ask them to conceal you from your enemies. The fog will hide your passage, but do not have any special ability to see through it yourself. So that is a two-way street. Cloak of Fog actually does sound like something that will be added to our permanent spell list because the value of Cloak of Fog is very high. Adding darkness with Shadowfield is good. Yes, but if something can see in the dark as well as we can, then they are we are both in equal situation. But if I do a Cloak of Fog, I could use that in order to cover my escape from something that can see just as well as we can in the dark. So we're definitely going to be learning that. We also have Scroll of Escape. Teleports us a random medium distance. Um, it's random and it's medium, so that means that it probably will never drop us nets to ourselves. And then we have Rocking Algorithms. A fully illustrated friendly guide describing how different algorithms are used to solve practical problems both in real life and programming. Seems like a boring computer's book. Um, yeah, we're probably... We won't leave it here, but we'll probably toss that in our bike right away. We are probably going to spend the nets a little bit here. 
reading and uh, just getting through these books. Having read through all those books, we we are in like way into the late day. We have learned all those spells. Um, something interesting did happen. We are no longer changing, but we did not change, despite the fact that we felt the pressure of this external force upon us from wherever else has been assisting us, we did not actually change. So for at least this time, our actions did not have consequences. Interesting. Not Does not mean that we need to just fall back on and use the safety net, this protection that we are being granted to our benefit. Knowing the future does not necessarily mean that we can be sloppy. But it is good to know that there's a chance that nothing can happen as a result of this, instead of just something every time. But that being said, we're going to turn off our MP3 player, turn off the candle that we were using to study by, because I didn't want to use my psionic powers, and we are going to try to get some sleep despite being wide awake. We wake up hungry, but we no longer have that supernatural hungry that changing was causing us to have. So fortunately, we should be able to go back to our usual self of being a light eater. One of the other things that we managed to uh, accomplish last night is that we now have the proficiency of wound care expert, which means that we are going to be able to bandage our wounds to an even greater and more skilled degree than before. Before we leave this place, I would like to see if there's anything I can use to shatter these crystals. Managed to get some crystallized mana and a uh, small mana shard. And can we use the crystallized mana to power our wolf's head cufflinks? It does not appear that we can. Uh, it does not appear that we can, no. We'll go ahead and shatter this one as well. More crystallized mana and more mana crystals. Those will be useful. Especially if we're going to be... Getting into magical crafting in proper. I do think that crafting is a key here. And it's going to be something that we focus on next. We are going to... Made for our bicycle, and then once we have our bicycle, we are going to make for home. The long journey that it is, we are going to head all the way back home. And uh, hopefully get there in one piece, and in one try. Once we do, we are going to focus... I left my headphones in, or my earplugs in. So I did not even hear that zombie being in here. We're going to grab a stick. And we are going to summon our Spear Brambles. Take him down. That was dangerous of us. We need to be careful. A SWAT zombie. That's, some, that's something worth considering. Is more armor. More armor would be very good. But we need to make sure that we... We don't weigh down our arms. We don't weigh down our our, our hands, our, our arms, or our legs. So that we can cast spells with full efficiency. Hmm. The Ballistic Vest might be pretty good for us. Perhaps not, though. We'll leave it for now. Take care of that. Where's this other small meat cocoon? I don't really want to leave these things behind. I don't know what they do. I don't know what they're capable of. But we've seen some of the nightmares of the cataclysm. And if something is growing, if something is evolving, it needs to die. It needs to be destroyed. I will say, though, we are getting quite proficient with the spear. 
more cocoons. No, thank you. Okay. We are actually going to drop a few things into our bicycle before moving away. It is about full now. And let's get out of here. That survivor zombie is not the greatest news there. Um, yeah, let's back up. And head up north here. I think being faster is going to be generally for the better on our side. There are those feral dwarves that we remember from earlier. Let's start heading south. As we were heading for our bike south, we have run into a fairly significant horde. I think we are going to just try and drive through them for the most part. Oh man, driving through them might actually be a bad idea. We remember what happened in our past whenever we, we tried to ignore hordes like this. Do you remember thinking that we need to find another way through this city? It may be sooner than later that we, we investigate another method to move around. We have seen some subway stations. Might have been a better idea to try, try for the subway station. I think for now... We are just trying to ride through. Okay, we got through. Thank goodness. We've at least made it back to the magic shop where we used to live. Not too far now. Just have to head to the southern intersection and head west. Something that needs to be made on our list of goals is a better way to more securely travel through this city. That's intersection. And we have just spotted one of the first problems. <sighs> There's a zombie brute here. That thing looks really strong. I think we want to avoid that quite heavily. So we are actually going to have to take a different route. Which means taking routes through parts of the city that we've not actually been through. At the speed that we've been trying to move, that is far from ideal. Yep. Uh, that's a new one as well. A tentacled zombie. What likely used to be the arms of the zombie are now a set of strange purplish tentacles. With what appears to have, what appears to be vestigial fingers at the end, they trail several meters behind to the tall zombie as it shambles along. That's awesome. I do actually sort of mean that literally on a certain level. Our school teaching has made monsters fascinating to us, and we've always been partial to them. As we were driving by, that's, uh, what is it, a bar guest? Yeah, bar guest managed to latch onto our light for just a second, but fortunately we were able to uh, pull away very quickly. And just drive past all of this stuff. Ooh, I know. What the hell is that? A gargoyle? This zombie's arms have stretched far beyond human limits. The skin lengthened into a gruesome 
fleshy membrane. The rest has become emaciated with thin rope-like muscles ripping through taut flesh. While it doesn't appear to be able to fly, it uses its mutated arms to make shockingly fast leaps. That Those bat-winged zombies have now evolved into gargoyles. We need to not forget that the cataclysm is an arms race. The zombies are not going to stop evolving. So we need power too. We're almost home. Almost to safety. We're getting to the part of the city where everything is destroyed, but also cleared out. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and uh, do this parking maneuver here and try and get our bicycle as close to the front door as possible so we don't have to carry things too far. And so that it's here for the future. And we're going to go ahead and uh, unload everything. And home sweet home. We may be here for a day or two. Go ahead and equip the staff. Because we would like to, if possible, get a real spear going. And get really set up for actual significant crafting. Okay. We have a few tasks that we need to take care of first before we start getting into crafting a spear, but um, after looking through what we have, we want to make a spear shaft. The best way to do that is to get a long stick and some oil, but we actually already have cooking oil, which will allow us to uh, oil the shaft. And then from there, we're going to be making a knife spear, which is going to probably be one of our best options. Um, so we do need to find something with drilling and then a spear shaft. Um, and that would give us a really good weapon that's actually on par, if not better, than the weapon that we were using before. Uh, so the big thing here is that we need more fabrication. But before we do that, we also want to repair some of the stuff that we were actively wearing. So we have uh, quite a few tasks ahead of us here. And uh, we're not going to be afraid anymore to, to really take on these tasks because it's not just survival. It's not just getting food. It's not just getting water. It's planning for the future. And we have no materials. Of course we do. don't have any materials. But we have a lot of stuff we can take apart. So we're going to get start starting working on that. As we've been sitting here studying, we did finally get our uh, fabrication skill, which was holding us back on a lot of different... Uh, recipes up to level four and we um, now understand a recipe that I want to work towards so if we were to make a steel spear we would need an anvil um, we need a lot of things here so this is a, a a good list to start working on here but we need an anvil a settling torch of some of some kind um, or a charcoal forge or demon forge or gas forge some sort of forge we would need a pair of tongs um, and a spear shaft. But if we do manage to make a spear, then using mana dust, we could actually make a plus one and then eventually a plus two spear using enchanting. Which means that uh, we'd be able to actually have like a, a legitimately magically enhanced spear. So this is going to be what we're going to work towards is being able to craft a, uh, spiel, a steel spear. Um, in the meantime, though, we also just learned... By getting our um, fabrication up, we just learned all of these amazing recipes to be able to enchant various weapons, which is just awesome. Curious if we also have the ability to make a druidic composite bow now, which would allow us to channel our druid spells. Okay, we have most of the steps that we need at this point. Um. So now what we need is, in order to get our spear shaft, we need a long stick. Should be able to find something like that nearby. And then we are going to, after that, make a knife spear for the time being. And uh, immediately start looking for some, like, heavy blacksmithing materials. So we're probably going to be searching out craft shops. 
for the possibility of like a metal metal working shop. But first we need to find a a long pole somewhere. We're actually going to uh, attempt to um we'll grab our hatchet here, equip it, and we'll attempt to take down one of these um oh there's a Kevlar zombie? What the hell is that? Okay. Well, that suddenly became our main concern, all of a sudden. Um, get some magic missiles. We hit it for 21 damage. It did actually take damage from that. Very, very good. Uh, yeah, magic missiles away. Man, it's fast, too. Kevlar zombie, huh? Another zombie down south there. We'll go ahead and match him to sell that guy down as well. I'm curious. Can we butcher this Kevlar zombie? Go ahead and do a full butchery real quick. Um, it did not appear. Oh my gosh, we actually did. We made Kevlar patches and sheets from the zombie that has... Um, mutated with Kevlar. That is so strange. Um, okay. We'll go ahead and take those. We're going to have to wash them, which will be difficult considering that they're in, in dozens and dozens of pieces now. But we'll keep them in as a pile. We'll go ahead and take the sinew because that's useful. And then um, we're going to pick this up. And we are going to compare this SWAT vest to our Blizzard vest and see which one's a little bit better here. Uh, SWAT vest is a lot more encumbrance. I'm not surprised. A little bit warmer. It covers more of our torso. And it's damaged right now, so it's showing us different stats, but... If we were able to get it fully repaired, it would be just more protection pretty much across the board. Actually, no, it looks like it's the same amount of protection. Interesting. And it weighs more, oh, but it covers more. So it is more protection because it takes that amount of protection and covers more of our body with it. It's almost all in the torso, though. So... And this only covers the upper torso. So I do actually think that this uh, SWAT Ballistic Vest is going to be better for us. We just need to work on getting it uh, clean and in a better... Um, sort of position for us. We're going to start taking some of the stuff here as well. Because we need, we need stuff to break down for parts. We need clothing and... Things made out of synthetic fibers and such like that. And if a, fe a feral falls into one of our holes here, then they tend to actually have clean clothing on them. And we don't have to go through the step of having to... Oh, there's some just sinew in there. That's interesting. We don't have to go through the step of having to clean everything. The plank over the pit there. And uh, there's some sticks here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull that uh, hatchet back out. And chop down this tree real quick. Okay, well, I made a tree trunk. That's progress, I guess. Now, can we turn that into something useful? Or is the tough zombie all the way down there? Okay, it's too close. It got on top of us very quickly. Oh, it's some magic missiles on it. Back the hell up. Take it out. I was hoping that there'd be 
there wouldn't be very many zombies left around here, but uh, that does not appear to be the case. Long sticks. There we go. We have two long sticks. In fact, we're just trying to haul all of this inside. Okay, so that's how we get our long sticks. We need to chop down trees and then chop up the logs. So now we can get our light back going. Drop that needle over here before I forget about it again. Just keep forgetting about it. And uh, make our first spear shaft, which will take a moment. We're going to have to literally carve this thing from scratch. So the first few spear shafts are actually going to be kind of difficult to make, but eventually we'll probably try to master the proficiency of carvings so that these are a lot easier to make and they take less time because some of the first spears we make, especially this nice spear, are going to kind of be a little bit of a mess. And uh, we might have to make a few of these before we get anything good going. Okay, so the knife spear does four bashing, 26 piercing, plus one to hit. And then the mate shift is minus one. Okay, so this is the best. We can also make a crude steel spear. Which one is better? Hard to say which one's better. Knife Spear and the Crude Steel Spear seem to be about identical. I can't tell what the difference is between them, other than what it takes to make them. We're more familiar with the Knife Spear, so we're going to go ahead and make that. And we'll use the Chef Knife um, on String. There we go. We have a knife spear. Let's see if we can make the spear strap. I believe that's a tailoring thing. So no, we don't have the ability to make a spear strap yet. But that was pretty thirsty work, pretty hungry work. Uh, and honestly, that was very good work for today. So with that, this is where we're going to leave you. This has been Cataclysm. Dark Days Ahead, The Journey of Vellum. If you guys are enjoying this series and enjoying where it's going, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more to come. I'm enjoying this series immensely and enjoying making it, so I am very happy to see other people follow me along with this journey. I hope you enjoyed, and goodbye.